BC 15 News. Mobile police continue to investigate tonight after a 17 year old was shot early this morning on Crest Haven Road. The male victim arrived at Spring Hill Hospital this morning after he was shot in the stomach. Officers say the victim was shot by an unknown subject and have not arrested anyone in connection with this incident. Police say the victim is being treated for a life threatening injury. This is an ongoing investigation. The rise in violent crime has pushed the Mobile Police Department to take extra measures to keep people safe. Mobile Police were supposed to start safety checkpoints today, but there's been a delay. I talked with Chief Paul Prine earlier this week about what you can expect. Mobile Police Chief Paul Prine says starting this month, officers will be carrying out two types of safety checkpoints, stationary checkpoints. We set up uh, particular roadblocks and we check the ingress and egress of uh, everyone that comes through that particular area and we're checking everyone. We don't target any one particular person. We check to make sure driver's license are current and to make sure people have the proper registration. And of course that opens the door for probable calls if, if there is contraband or gives us an opportunity uh, to find weapons as well and, and to include individuals that have warrants on them. And roving checkpoints. Roving safety checkpoints is, is really just targeted uh, traffic enforcement and the, the outcome really is the same is to get guns and drugs off the streets. Are you at all concerned about at these checkpoints something going wrong and people have a heightened anxiety about having this in their area, in their neighborhood? I can assure the public they have absolutely nothing to fear from this. What we want the public to know is that we're out there because we understand the severity of the type of crimes that are going on right now in our community. Chief Prine says drivers need to have their license, registration, and insurance ready to hand the officers at these checkpoints. These are things that we as law-abiding citizens by law are supposed to do each and every day. I would just ask the community that if there is an issue for whatever reason on that stop, we'll never solve that conflict out on the side of the road. That If they feel like one of our officers have violated their rights, or have mistreated them in any way, they can certainly call the Internal Affairs Unit of the Police Department or report it to my office and we'll ensure that it's taken care of. Mobile Police say they plan to release dates and locations of these checkpoints this week. The Mobile community showed out for the annual Parade of Threes on DIP today. The parade was originally scheduled for December 11th, but was postponed due to weather. The parade started at BC Rain High School on Dauphin Island Parkway and ended at Palmer Pillins Middle School on Military Road. The parade, sponsored by City Council President C.J. Small, State Representatives Barbara Drummond and Adeline Clark, celebrated the citizens of District 103, District 97, and District 3. The Christmas festivities rolled on today with the 9th annual Dawes Christmas Parade. The parade began at Surge Church on Dawes Road with businesses, bands, and civic groups getting things started. The streets were also lined with floats and the Seven Hills Fire Department as Santa made a special appearance for the crowd. This parade was also originally scheduled for December 11th but was postponed due to weather. Prodigy Pantry is once again giving back to the community and taking care of others this holiday season. The organization filled up hundreds of cars in Baldwin County with Christmas dinner for more than 1,500 families. The executive director of Prodigy Pantry says today's event is important to help restore the spiritual and emotional health of the community. It's important not just to feed the physical, but also the spiritual and emotional health of our community. That's what making Christmas merry is about, providing healthy food. The volunteers are here. They're giving up of their family time to make sure others can have a happy holiday. Prodigy Pantry's final food giveaway will be Tuesday for Baldwin County families starting at 9 a.m. Today, Alabama State Troopers and community volunteers dropped off donated toys to the Marine Toys for Tots program at Fort Whiting Reception Hall. Toy drives like this are very important this year to help families in need. Tomorrow, troopers will also be distributing toys at the Ronald McDonald House at 1 p.m. State troopers say they would love to have anyone willing to come help and volunteer. 
Drivers should be on the lookout and staying cautious along Highway 31 in Spanish Fort. The road has recently been upgraded to four lanes and the speed limit is currently 30 miles per hour. Spanish Fort police officers have been writing more tickets lately for speeding vehicles in that area. The Spanish Fort Police Department wants to set the tone for how people should be driving along that highway. Former Auburn quarterback Bo Nix now has a new home. Last week, Nix announced that he would be transferring from Auburn and searching for a new school with his last year of eligibility. Today, Nix announced that he would be taking his talents to the University of Oregon to play for the Ducks. Nix scored 57 total touchdowns in his three years at Auburn and won SEC Freshman of the Year in 2019. Friends and family gathered in New Orleans to remember Glenn Foster Jr. The former New Orleans Saints defensive end and Alabama native died in police custody in Alabama earlier this month. While many just knew him as a player on the field, to friends and family, he was a dear husband and father of four. Relatives held a service for him Saturday with more questions than answers. This family deserves to know why this happened. What could have been done to prevent it? and why it is that he was in law enforcement care and was not protected and cared for. It was discovered that Foster died from strangulation while in police custody. Now taking a look at the weather for this week. Monday's wake up temperatures will be in the 40s. Showers return by the afternoon, affecting almost half of the viewing area. Then a 30% chance of showers on Tuesday. Highs will be in the upper 50s for the first couple days of the work week. A slow warming trend will be underway late week. And by Friday, daytime highs will be in the 70s. Your Christmas day looks rain free and warm with highs in the mid 70s. Moving now to the pandemic, newly published information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says getting vaccinated against COVID-19 could be the difference between life and death. The findings based on information collected through October says people who have yet to roll up their sleeves are 10 times more likely to test positive compared to those who are vaccinated and had a booster shot. Unvaccinated people are also 20 times more likely to die from the virus. The COVID-19 Omicron variant has now been detected in at least 45 U.S. states, Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. Alabama is one of those states. Mobile County Health officials say it was not detected in our area, but was in the West Central District. Nationwide, Omicron is expected to surpass Delta to become the dominant variant in the U.S. in the coming weeks. Mobile County Health Department Dr. Remy Murphy says they are concerned about how this patient contracted the virus here in the state because it was not travel related as many initial cases in the states are. It's travel associated Omicron we would expect, but to know that there is already person to person transmission in the state of Alabama um, is an indication that, you know, we thought it was probably here, um, didn't know to what extent it was present in Alabama, and I expect that as we see more and more um, PCR specimens um, sequenced, we will learn that it's more widespread than we thought. Nationwide, both cases and hospitalizations are at levels not seen since September at the end of the summer spike. These variants could be a problem for millions who are planning to travel this holiday season. The Delta variant is a major problem, but Omicron cases are slowly increasing. Medical researchers are still trying to understand the new variant's transmissibility, severity, and defense against the vaccines. Due to the rise in cases, the Biden administration has extended its federal mask mandate through mid-March. The mandate applies to people traveling by any means of public transportation. Airports are now busier than ever as holiday travel is getting underway. One airport in Los Angeles is really feeling the impact as millions are making plans to travel and see family. Rick Montanas has more. This is one of the four busiest nights of the holiday travel season at LAX. Day change announcement. More than three million passengers, double from this time last year, are expected to pass through terminals here between now and the start of the new year. It doesn't really take me that much time to get here, and today it took me a little longer, so yes, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty busy. Jose Aguilar and Irma Sharp are headed out on a weekend business trip. Come back over here to drop off your bags. They say the check-in for their Delta flight was the easy part. 
It was uh, very difficult because there is a lot of traffic right now um, on the freeway. While LAX is expected to see twice as many passengers as 2020, it's still going to be about a million fewer passengers than before the pandemic. After Friday and Sunday, the other two busiest days to travel from LAX are expected to be the day after Christmas and January 2nd. Where are y'all flying to? And it's not just long lines. Delays are frustrating travelers. We're supposed to leave at 6.30 p.m. The flight got delayed till 8 a.m. We got a text message an hour before and we're basically here just waiting. Now he and his friends are trying to decide if they drive home to Chino Hills or look for another flight. It's busy Christmas and then every other flight right now is like a thousand fifteen hundred dollars and, and they all have delays. No nonstop flights at all. Holiday travel often accompanied by the headache of trying to reach your destination on time. And then another thing, remember we still have the issue with the COVID, so the whole process is also an, an interesting thing. So, you know, yeah, definitely. You, so people should take an extra hour. <laughs> extra time to get through the growing crowds of passengers. Coming up, a woman and her dog are safe after some heroic actions from a delivery driver. Also, Cheryl Atkinson with Full Measure shares a story filled with controversy and an unexpected ending. At least 208 people are now known to have died after a powerful storm struck the Philippines on Thursday. A super typhoon with winds exceeding 120 miles per hour sent 300,000 people running to safety when it hit the country's southeastern islands. At least 239 people were injured and 52 others have been reported missing by local police. Police in Minnesota are investigating what caused the death of seven people in a South Moorhead home Saturday. Investigators say family members returned to the house on Saturday night and found four adults and three children dead. Police say there are no signs of violence or forced entry and there is no known threat to the public. The Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office is conducting autopsies to determine the cause of death and to confirm identities. In Florida, a Jacksonville family of 12 lost their home in a fire Saturday morning. Family members are saying that for now, they're just grateful everybody made it out okay. Homeowner Michael Bush says he has a ring doorbell camera, which helped him see where the fire started. He, his wife, and their eight kids and two grandkids were in the house at the time of the fire. Bush is trying to keep his head up for his family. It just a situation that you got to grow from. You got my kids and my grandkids, so I had, I had it was survival mode. The Red Cross was able to give Bush and his family temporary housing in a hotel. A teenager and dog are saved from an attack by an unknown Amazon, saved by an unknown Amazon delivery driver. And Friday, the family got to meet and thank that driver for saving them from that dog. Lauren Martinez was there. This is actually your package. I was coming to oh. deliver it right now. <laughs> and this is, uh, thank you. Thank you so and much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it so it's much. No I'm so glad I was here. Michael Ray and his daughter Lauren are thanking the Amazon delivery driver, Stephanie Lantz, that saved the day. <laughs> On Monday, a ring doorbell camera captured 19 year old Lauren holding the family dog Max in her arms trying to swat away an aggressive dog. Lauren screamed for help and Lance came swooping in. Get your back. Get back. Lance put herself in front of the dog, allowing Lauren and Max to get inside safely. The screams made me think of my own child. Um, I would only hope that somebody would jump in and help her if she was in a similar situation. I wouldn't even think it's motherly, just it's the human thing to do. Lance said delivery drivers go through so much we don't see captured on camera. You're a bad dog! Two days prior, I had been bit by a dog. Um, two days before that, I had saved a baby that wasn't even two years old yet locked in a house. I mean, we really do go for a, through a lot and we're there when other people aren't, and sometimes it's not even recognized. I have a coworker who put out a fire in a backyard the other day. It's just, we are really there sometimes when nobody's there. 
To show their appreciation, members from Amazon and 702 Logistics, the local courier company contracted by Amazon, surprised Launce and her family. We got you guys four tickets to the Enchanted Christmas at the Las Vegas ballpark. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Everyone wanted to tell Launce she was amazing, even Max, and no one could forget her classic line at the end of the video. You're a bad dog! All right, now three, say bad dog. Bad dog! Bad dog! Bad dog. <laughs> Lauren Martinez, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. One Iowa restaurant owner is doing what he can to help those still reeling from the effects of last week's devastating storms. Willie Ray Fairley with Willie Ray's Q Shack is doing what he does best, slicing up ribs. The food is being given to survivors and those who have traveled to help the citizens of Mayfield, Kentucky. One volunteer was on her way to Nashville but felt called to stop and help. I had been following the devastation on the news um, since it happened and I was sitting in my chair one night and just knew that we had to do something, whether it be use my hands or my heart. I just felt like there was a great pull to come down here to help these people. Today was the last day that Fairley was in Mayfield to help feed the community. He hopes to be back home in Iowa to reopen his restaurant by Tuesday. NBC 15 is proud to partner with Sinclair Broadcast Group and the American Red Cross in the recovery effort. We hope you will too. You can help people affected by tornadoes in the South and Midwest. Your donation enables the Red Cross to prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from these disasters. Financial support and blood are desperately needed. Sinclair will match the first $25,000 raised to help. Head over to SinclairCares.com. This holiday season is a little sweeter for one former soldier. Full Measures Cheryl Atkinson has the complicated story with an unexpected ending. This is a story about um, a man that went to war for his country and basically was sacrificed for politics. My to be sure, Nick Slatton's version of his own story, told here in his first television interview, isn't shared by everyone. Slatton is a decorated former Army sniper. After two combat tours in Iraq, he was hired by a company called Blackwater to work on a U.S. rescue team in Iraq. It was codenamed Raven 2-3. On September 16, 2007, there was a terrorist suicide bombing attack on Americans, and Raven 2-3 got called in to help. So we're tasked with going to extract them. And on the way to extract them, the Iraqi police opened fire on us. Fourteen Iraqis, including two young boys, were shot and killed in the firefight. Slatton and the team insisted they'd been ambushed and acted in self-defense. Prosecutors and the FBI said the team opened fire on innocent civilians. How many trials did you have? Three. Originally charged with manslaughter, the time limit or statute of limitations on that charge expired, and prosecutors levied a more serious charge, first-degree murder. They alleged that Slatton fired the first shot that day. A jury found him guilty, but a judge tossed out the conviction on appeal because Slatton had been unfairly barred from telling the jury that someone else had admitted firing the first shot. Then trial number two ended in a hung jury. At trial number three, the jury found Slatton guilty of first-degree murder, and he got a life sentence. An end to the court drama, but the beginning of a new chapter one of the other prisoners slid a note under my door and I opened it up and it was like four Blackwater contractors pardoned by President Trump. And I was like, and so my buddy had a tablet in the cell. I was like, look at this. And he was like, that's you, man. How did you feel when you heard, or maybe you just knew this, a lot of people were arguing when the pardon came that you guys didn't deserve it, that they were letting killers go free. So those were the people that never actually looked into our case that never actually read the trial. Today, he claims the accusations, the three trials, the years in prison, all changed him for the better, helping heal a soldier who'd come back from war a broken man. Slatton is among those pressing for Congress to pass what they call post-war amnesty for accused former soldiers who served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. For Full Measure, I'm Cheryl Ackeson. And you can see Full Measure right here on NBC 15 Sunday mornings at 10. Taking another look at the weather.
For the week ahead, Monday's wake up temperatures will be in the lower 40s. Showers return by the afternoon, affecting almost half of the viewing area, then a 30% chance of showers on Tuesday. Highs will be in the upper 50s for the first couple of days of the work week. A slow warming trend will be underway late week, and then by Friday, Christmas Eve, it will be in the 70s. Your Christmas day looks rain free and warm with highs in the mid 70s. Be sure to stay weather aware this week by downloading our NBC 15 weather app. You can track storms on the go as well as receive alerts when there's disruptive weather headed your way. Just search WPMI WX in the App Store or Google Play. After the break, how one newly released movie is shattering records at the box office after just one day. The latest movie in the Marvel series Spider-Man No Way Home had a hugely successful opening day at the box office Friday, bringing in more than $121 million. It's the second highest opening day in the box office history and also the highest opening day for the month of December. And after a single day, the film already has the highest grossing opening of any movie during the pandemic. Some industry analysts believe the film could go even higher in the coming days. Well, thanks for tuning in to the News After Football, and don't forget to stay tuned with us on MyNBC15.com.